folks, football is back, and Bet Online remains your number one source for all your football betting needs this season. You'll find the latest odds, matchup info, player news, and game trends. As your continued source for all sports wagering info, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, live scores, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports and events like MLB, MMA, tennis, boxing, and even golf. Head to betonline.ag, that's B-E-T-O-L-I-N-E.ag, to receive your 100% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure you use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts, and also Bet Online sponsors the Boss Man Show on your radio. Folks, back on the Boss Man Show. New, newly OVC minute. Lyndon Wood transitioning to D one. The Lions out up there near St. Louis. Coach Kyle Gorderman here with me on the Boss Man Show. Coach, how things going up there, man? It's going good, man. Appreciate you having us on. Uh, you know, obviously we're excited about the the new transition and uh, and appreciate you taking the time out to let us talk about it a little bit. Now, Coach, let me ask you this, man. Um, I know in D two you get ten scholarships. You can slip up by how you want to do it. So yeah. how has it been getting half 13 full ones now? Not better to split them up the way it used to in D2 for the accounting with you guys budgeting for having guys on, on your roster now. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think early on um, it was a little bit of a kind of a work in progress uh, because we had some guys on the roster that were that were on partial scholarships. And, uh, and a lot of those guys we had to transfer, you know, over to full scholarships. The one thing we were doing uh, at the division two level is we were trying to just use, we were trying to find full scholarship guys anyway, you know, guys that, that we thought were, Hey, these are, these, these guys are talented enough. They're good enough players that, Hey, we're, we're only going to get these guys on a full scholarship. So, so we didn't have too many guys uh, in that situation, but we had to work through a handful of guys to decide, you know, what direction we were going to go with them, you know, early on, I guess that started back in uh, March when we, you know, when our season ended and that was one of the first things we did was kind of rework our scholarship situation. So it was a, it was definitely a process. No doubt. And also uh, did it help you for us, the guys you can't recruit now, because you know, now guys, he was D one and not D two. Cause some guys don't want to go D two. So how did it help you in the recruiting process with the portal and those things, finding guys who want to come play for you, knowing you are in OVC now. Yeah, uh, that's a good point because I think immediately, you know, you saw an immediate, an immediate change, an immediate impact um, from the second we made that announcement. Um, you know, I'll tell you, we had a, we had a really nice ceremony here, um, and again, it was like late February when we made the announcement, and we had about a thirty-minute uh, ceremony in our arena to uh, to make the announcement. Uh, and by the time I got back to my office, I had about thirty emails. Uh, from various coaches, uh, various programs uh, that that would have never reached out before, and it was seriously that in that amount of time, uh, you know, my inbox was was full of emails <laughs> reaching out to say, "Hey, coach, look at our guys. You're Division One," um, and so you saw it there. Um, and then I think what you kind of just said as well that that attraction, man, guys want to play Division One basketball, right? And so you know, immediately it helped us when we made our initial phone calls to guys that may not have been interested just, just a few weeks before that. Now suddenly a lot more guys are interested. And I, th I think what you see is, you know, guys in the transfer portal, obviously they want to stay at the division one level. So, uh, so that attraction became a little bit easier for us to find guys out of the portal, find guys out of junior college, because again, that's it's kind of what everybody's dream is, right? Is to play division one basketball. And now we have the opportunity to offer that. And you're right about St. Louis, too, which does not, does not hurt either. So, yeah, no, it's a beautiful location, man. St. Charles, where we're at itself is, you know, we're eight minutes from the airport in St. Louis, you know, 15 minutes from downtown St. Louis. 
um, we've, we've got a beautiful location and, and a great setup. And I guess for recruiting wise, you can pretty much go four hours, draw a circle around St. <laughs> Charles and find any kind of player that you want that fits what you and your staff want to do and what your program culture is pretty much as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can be in Chicago in, in three and a half, four hours. We can be in Memphis in, in three hours. So so you can get you can get every direction you want to go. Um, and that's not counting, you know, all the junior college. You know, we're in a great junior college region uh, with Kansas junior colleges, the junior colleges in the state, the Illinois region. Uh, so, yeah, we feel like location wise, you know, we're in a we're in a four to five hour radius where we can we can touch a lot of people. No doubt. And, and for you, Coach Nell, with, with being the OVC, I know you was, a, you was also you are a, a, a little of SEMO. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you kept drawing the OVC school there. How, how much have you been watching film on those guys trying to this summer trying to prepare yourself for guys who you're going to be playing this season? You know, a little bit, um, a little bit. I, I've done some. Uh, one of my assistants has actually watched a lot over the summer um, because there's obviously a newness there that, that we've got to get a feel for for what we might see. You know, and a lot of the teams in the league have, have, have had a lot of turnover and changed. Um, from a from an individual standpoint, but I don't think typically coaches don't change their style a lot. You know, uh, every now and then you'll see that. But, you know, I think that when you look through the league and, you know, you see coaches that have been at these places, you know, four or five years, you know, a couple of newcomers, obviously. But but I think that you get a good feel for for how they're always going to try to play. And I think it's been good for us to get a look at that. Um, you know, I think the other thing that that's interesting to me and, and, and is intriguing is is what's the talent gap going to be? I mean, we know there's going to be a difference, you know, making the move from the GLVC to the OVC division two to division one. We know there's going to be a change there in talent level. But but how wide is it? You know, is, is what I think is going to be interesting to see, too. So, yeah, we, we've looked at a lot of those things. No doubt. And, um, and for you, um. How was scheduling this time around transitioning to, to D1? How was scheduling? I know that's usually one of your biggest things was coaches as well, scheduling and recruiting, yeah. of course. Yeah, you know, I think it was uh, I think it was fine. Um, you know, I think there was a point where we probably could have got it done really quick, but we kind of took our time with it. Uh, you know, we ended up playing, we we ended up playing four guarantee games. Uh probably could have stopped at three, but but I added another one late. So we've got we've got Illinois, Missouri, BYU. Uh, and we open at Dayton. Uh, so four really challenging guarantee games there. Um, three non-division one schools, which which I think we you have to do when you play those guarantee games. And then I think we've got, you know, I hope we've got, you know, a, a handful of division one teams mixed in our non-conference schedule that will give us a really good, you know, really good barometer of, you know, similar teams to what I think we'll see in the OVC, uh, you know, Idaho State, UMKC, uh, Dixie State, now Utah Tech. Um, you know, we play in an MTE at McNeese State with Western Carolina and Lamar. Uh, so, you know, I, I hope that that'll give us a really good gauge kind of in a non-conference of, of similar teams to, to our league. So I, I think it ended up being okay for us. Obviously challenging, but, but I think it was probably as good as we could get it. No doubt. And for you, um, how has practices been so far? No practices started for you guys. Um, how big is it? How's it been going for you guys so far? Getting guys to buy into the system here, and also uh, understanding this is step step up now for you. For, for yeah, the, yeah. You know, I think days. that uh, you know when we got started, we did we did five weeks in July, and we didn't we didn't have our we didn't even have our entire team. We had a we had a big kid uh, that actually was only here for a couple of weeks. He had to leave to go redo his visa, and we actually signed two kids after we got done with our July practices. But but immediately, regardless of how many guys we had you know, there was an excitement right off the bat. You know, there was an enthusiasm that was that was new uh, because what we were doing was new. Um, and that's been able to carry through, you know, to the start of the fall semester, to the start of official practice last week. Uh, so the energy, uh, I think, that our guys have shown up with on a daily basis has been great. Uh, you got to figure out, obviously, how you bottle that up and how long you can keep that, right? <laughs> you know, that's the challenge for us is, is through ups and downs to, to keep that positive mindset and keep that excitement. Um, but then I think to go a step further, you know, we, we basically, we returned two guys, uh, Kevin Caldwell and Brandon Trimble that played a lot of minutes for us last year. So now you're basically looking at, you know, 10, 11 brand new guys to your system, to your program, to your culture. Um, and so that just come, that, that just creates a lot of teaching, you know, a lot of, a lot of commun communication, a lot of teaching, uh, a lot of meetings, you know, Hey, this is how we do things on the court. This is how we do things off the court. You know, here's our expectations. And so in some aspects, you feel like you start over on that a little bit, 
but at the same time, it's, you know, it's nothing that, that we've put our head down and been frustrated about. I think, again, it all, it all points back to just an exciting time period right now. Now, with the games being about a month away, how much do you still go between skill development um, and, sch and schematic and installation right now? Because I know it's, yeah. we, we, get, we get a month away, guys can see, see, see complain to each other all the time, but how much do you balance player development versus putting in schemes right now? I, well, I think that's team. the hard. I think it's the hard part, right? Is you know, I think we try to we try to stay committed uh, to our skill work. You know, not only now as we get closer to games, but throughout the year because um, you know player development is important for us. Uh, it's 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 something that we really use as a recruiting tool as we try to try to develop each player. You know, I think obviously everybody that comes to your program, you know, they have aspirations of playing at some level professionally. So, you know, I think part of our recruiting is that we owe it to you to try to make you a better player, uh, not just make you a better player in our system, if that makes sense. You know, we want to improve your skill level all the way around. Um, so we really try to stay with, you know, we'll do 20, 30 minutes a day of skill work. Um, as much as I may want to drop that and just get to scheme type stuff and offense and defense and concepts like that, you know, I, I just think, and especially for our team, we just have a lot of guys right now that, we need to make sure they're developing because again, at the end of the day, it's going to give us a better group anyway. So, so we try to hang on to it for a long time, but, but you, you bring up a good point because it comes this type of year where, you know, typically coaches start thinking about that first game and now we don't have any out of bounds plays in yet. When are we going to do that? Hey, we got to get more plays in. Uh, hey, yes. I don't have a deep a zone defense. When are we going to work on offense? You know, you just feel like there's a lot to do, but, uh, but we, we hang in there pretty good. And I understand because my dad's a coach, 82 okay. years old. Yeah. So I, I, I grew up around a coach my whole life. So trust me, I understand you, those. You I hear those conversations <laughs> this day. And I'm going to tell you, coach, uh, my father, 82 years old, has, has a legal pad out, takes notes still, and asks yeah. me questions like, Dad, I'm, I'm a radio dude now. I'm not playing no more. I'm, I'm radio <laughs> fully. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You never lose it, do you? Never. Never. He's yeah. Hey, look, he coaches everybody he can. He, and at 82 years old, he's still – I saw this. So I was like, "Dang, relax. Just watch yeah. the I can't enjoy, watch the guy. I got. I'm looking for certain things, son. Like he can yeah. still his day. He can't just let it go ever." <laughs> no, I get it. Yes, indeed. Let me ask this, uh, uh, Coach. When did you decide you want to get into coaching? I know, I know. My father wanted to do it early. He wanted to get into it after he got out of high school and playing college, playing college ball. He wanted to get into coaching. So for you, what made you want to get into coaching and help help you up, young men? Uh, you know, I think I think a lot of it. Uh, same thing you're saying. My father was a coach, also. Uh, he was, he was my high school coach. So I grew up in a gym, uh, you know, from the time I could walk going to my dad's practices and being around his teams, you know, being the, being a water boy, you know, when I'm eight years old, riding the school bus to the games with him. And, and that always, that always stayed with me. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, when I got, you know, later in my high school career and realized, you know, continuing to play probably wasn't going to be, wasn't going to be there. Um, you know, going to school as a freshman, really having no idea like what I wanted to major in. Right. And, you know, I think a lot of guys like, Oh, I'm going to major in business. So I kind of just fell into the same thing. Right. And about one semester into that, I thought, nah, this, this business major isn't for me. I, I need to go coach. Um, and I think the only thing that, that the only drawback to that, to be honest with you is my dad didn't really want me to coach. <laughs> you know, he, I think, you know, he had been through it. He understood the, you know, the, the, the tough times of coaching and, you know, the time commitment and, and, and the things that you have to deal with from sometimes what people would perceive as the negative side of coaching. Um, but finally, I just said, hey, I, I want to coach and, you know, kind of turn my, my focus to that and, you know, started working with the teams when I was in school and, uh, and really just kind of took off from there. And I got an opportunity uh, after I graduated to, to be an assistant coach at East Central uh, Community College and been going ever since. So, so I think that's what kind of got me in in that direction. Obviously, was just kind of growing up, growing up around my dad, and just the love for for basketball itself. And see, my dad wanted me to get into coaching. I said, "No, pops, I don't have the patience. I'm too competitive, and yeah. my language is is wor it's worse than yours." So, I <laughs> <laughs> well, so well, you know the the one difference that I had than my dad. You know, again, my dad was a high school coach, but I, I had no. I just had no desire, I think, to to be a high school teacher. Um, so, you know, obviously to, to coach back in, at that time, you know, you had to have a teaching degree and you had to teach. And and I really didn't want to be a be a high school teacher. So I said, well, look, I'm going to go the college route. And, you know, I, I can still remember having that conversation with my dad. And 
he kind of said good luck <laughs> because you know he knew how hard it was to get you know into the college basketball game and uh again i, I got some some breaks along the way and, and was able to get started but uh but yeah that was kind of the difference is i didn't really have much interest in, in being a high school teacher i wanted to get straight to college so well, i told my father on the radio I don't, I don't have any losses. I win every day. <laughs> it's less stressful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got a great record. Yeah, I don't lose or win every day. <laughs> I don't win every day. I don't lose all this. I don't take it personally with me. I go home yeah. with a smile on my face every night off the, off the radio. So, so that's what I told no my doubt. father. <laughs> yeah, you, you're probably smarter than all of us. <laughs> yeah, yes. And last one for you, man. Uh, I guess we talked about a little before I got started here. Uh, you was going to see Mo with Tennessee, Tennessee State. So what's your favorite memories of being at SEMO and playing at Tennessee State when you when you all we played you all in football, man? Yeah, you know, uh one, I, I think the the atmosphere of the games, you know, obviously when you go to the game, you know, when you play at Tennessee State, you get a different atmosphere there than any place else, you know, in the league, right? And uh, you know, and I think that was always that was always intriguing because, you know, I think the first time you see it, it's kind of, it's kind of intimidating or almost distracting. You know, you got the band in there and you're looking around and, and it's loud and it's, and it's crowded and then they're talking to you. Right. And so you, so you see that, but, you know, I think the thing that I, that I take away from it, whether, you know, I went when, whether when I was a student at Seymour, whether I was an assistant coach, um, they've always just had talented guys. You know, you would always have one or two talented guys, man, that could really play, um, you know, I mean, they've got, uh, you know, guys that were, were NBA guys, uh, or borderline NBA guys, guys that hung around the D League for a while, guys that made rosters. Um, so I think between the atmosphere and, and the talent that they always had, you, you knew whenever you were going to play Tennessee State, it was going to be a, it was going to be a intense game and, and, and a big challenge. No doubt. Well, Coach, man, good to talk to you, man, for the first time on the show before doing the game with you real soon. I, now, uh, I looked at the schedule. I saw you play Tennessee State. I'm going to come see you, man. Uh, also, I hope good for this. Good for seeing you. I, I have on some blue, but I'll still for it. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> anytime, anytime you want to talk, man, I'd be glad to do it. I appreciate the time, and, and we've got to get ourselves out there, get our name out there. So I appreciate you doing it, and let me know if you make it to the game. I'd love to meet you. I sure will, Coach. Thanks so much, buddy. All right. Thanks, man. All right. We'll see you. Folks, football is back, and Bet Online remains your number one source for all your football betting needs this season. You'll find the latest odds, matchup info, player news, and game trends. As your continued source for all sports wagering info, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, live scores, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports and events like MLB. MMA, tennis, boxing, and even golf. Head to betonline.ag, that's B-E-T-O-L-I-N-E.ag to receive your 100% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure you use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts, and also BetOnline sponsors the Boss Man Show on your radio. <laughs> 